Uh, hello and welcome to a quick demonstration of the Slice Micro uh, data acquisition system from DTS. The Slice Micro is a highly modular, a data, very portable data acquisition system that is comprised of a base layer, which is fundamental to all configurations, and then uh, uh, a series of transducer layers uh, that we put on top of the base layer to build up a system. Um, each layer has three channels and we can put up to eight layers on top of a base, so a maximum of 24 channels per stack. We have a, an up and down connector. This is how we connect to the computer for setups and for uh, you know, uh, uh, communicating to the PC and also uh, downloading data after we've acquired uh, signals. And then the other connector, the down connector is used to connect to things like uh, power, uh, trigger signals, uh, status light, and these kinds of things. As I mentioned, on top of the base layer you put uh, transducer layers, and in this case we have a bridge layer which has three connectors, and this is where we would plug in three bridge type sensors. And we have other types of uh, sensor layers as well. This one is a sensor for supporting IEPE types of transducers, such as accelerometers and um, microphones that use ICP power. Okay, uh, so that's what the hardware looks like. Um, I'm going to use this system uh, for demonstration purposes. This is a three-channel system, so it has a base layer and it has a bridge layer with three channels, and we have it mounted on a heat sink block. Okay, so connecting the slice is, is pretty straightforward. Uh, on the up connector, we, we communicate to the computer through USB, so I'll plug in the cable into the up connector. It's actually much easier than I'm making it look. But. And then um, on the down connector, we will um, connect to uh, what we call a, uh, the slice end of chain device, which is how we can access things like power and uh, trigger signals and status signals and other things. Um, but we can connect direct to a battery or we can go to a, an AC-DC power supply if we want to work off of wall power. But I went ahead and plugged into power here and you'll see on the side of the unit there are a couple of LEDs, and these LEDs will start blinking as the, the system is powered up and becomes alive and establishes communication with the computer. And uh, once we reach a, a kind of a blue steady state signal, that means that we're good to go. So uh, what I'm going to do next is I'll go ahead and connect a transducer. Uh, this is a flex beam. It's got a, a strain gauge mounted to it. I'll go ahead and connect this to channel one on the bridge layer of the slice. And uh, we've got a sensor connected. Okay, so now that we have the slice data acquisition system uh, connected to the computer via the USB cable and we have a sensor connected to one of the channels we'll go ahead and uh, initiate the Sliceware software. So on your desktop you should have a shortcut uh, if you've installed the software and uh, now I'll double click on that and uh, Sliceware is up and going. Uh, the first thing it's going to do is it's going to interrogate the USB um, connection and see if there is a data acquisition system connected and indeed, uh, you can see on the right side here that a USB connection has been established to a slice system. It has a base serial number here of 371, and it has a, a bridge layer, and that's three channels on that bridge layer, and connected to one of the channels is the strain gauge. All right, so uh, on the left side of the screen, you'll see uh, this kind of a scroll down window here. That's your sensor database. So if you have other sensors uh, that you use and you want to keep them in a library, this is where they go. Uh, and then below that is uh, a screen that is specific to a particular sensor that you might have connected. Um, so if I click on anything in the sensor database, uh, it brings up that sensor information. 
I'm going to go ahead and go back over to the right side of the screen here and click on this uh, channel one on the bridge and click on the strain gauge and here again if you go to the left side you'll see uh, we've got specific information about that strain gauge you know, including things like serial number and um, uh, the, the type of uh, sensor it is, um, sensitivity, uh, the sensor type, uh, excitation voltage, and so on. Okay, so uh, we have our sensor uh, recognized and um, we're ready to go. Um, one last thing, uh, I'll talk in gen just in general terms about the user interface of Sliceware. At the top of the screen, you'll see uh, a number of sort of tabs here. Uh, the way you navigate through Sliceware is you basically go from left to right in sequence and then uh, by the time you've made it all the way to the right you've made it to uh, you've completed a test and um, you should have your data exported and and um, and and all uh, all completed and properly handled all right but uh, we've finished the prepare tab now and this is generally where we set up sensors um, I'm gonna go now next to diagnostics and diagnostics is uh, sort of a, a calibration routine that Sliceware uses to just make sure that the setup parameters uh, and the sensors all make sense um, and they are checked against uh, predefined tolerances that are acceptable. We do this just to make sure that um, there's not a bad sensor, maybe a bad connection or a bad value uh, that, that um, doesn't make sense. Uh, so it's just a precautionary thing before we actually uh, do a test and it can save a lot of time in the long run. So it's waiting for me to go ahead and and initiate this diagnostics routine. I'm going to go ahead and press the stack icon. And you can see now it's performing diagnostics and it's doing these these various checks like checking excitation voltage, checking noise, checking offset and range and and so on depending on the sensor type. Um, so we finished the diagnostics now, and in general, uh, green, actually not in general, um, green is always good, so if you pass the diagnostics test, there, there should be uh, uh, green highlighted areas here that say pass. If there was any kind of a failure, you'd see a red block, uh, and it would denote the failure. And then if you wanted to understand specifically uh, what failed, on the right side here is a table, and you can see the diagnostics um, values that were measured and, and those against the upper and lower acceptable tolerances. Okay, so we passed the um, diagnostics routine. Next we'll go to real time. And real time puts up a, a kind of a strip chart graph uh, that's, that's actually uh, looking at data at real time right now. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and flex the strain gauge sensor because that's what's uh, being showed here. So I've got a beam and I've got a strain gauge attached to it and I'm flexing that beam and we can see uh, deflections moving like, like, uh, like we should, so that's all good. So you can do this for each sensor that you have connected. Uh, it's a way to check out uh, to make sure uh, what, what you're looking at makes sense before you actually run the test. Okay, now I'm going to shift over to the Acquire tab. Okay, and in the Acquire tab, this is where we uh, actually prepare our, our data acquisition using the Slice system. Um, and so we, we set up things like the sample rate, which is in the top left corner here. And you see we can set anything from five samples a second up to 500,000 samples per second. I'm just going to go ahead and keep it at, at 20,000 samples per second. And then the next drop down is recorder mode. It defaults to uh, just uh, recorder mode, which is works in essence like a tape recorder. Uh, so you press start and it records for some duration that's predefined in these uh, windows below here. Uh, there are other types of recorder modes like circular buffer and continuous mode and hybrid mode and things like that. But I'm just going to keep it in recorder mode for now. And uh, in recorder mode there's there's no pre-triggered data. It's just you press start and then it starts to record. So, uh, But we do have to set up a post trigger and that's how long we want to run the test. I'm going to just say 10 seconds. And uh, up here next is a text test ID. This is uh, the label that will be given to the data when it's, when it's stored away. I'm going to call it desk3 test. Uh, and so this is the, the name of the file that gets, that gets stored after a recording is complete. And this is what we'll, we'll see uh, in the PC when the data has been extracted. 
And then finally, uh, there's kind of a notes field here where you can just put in anything you like. Uh, if you want to put in some information about your test setup or the operator that's performing the test, uh, it's, a, it's an open field where you can put in data that you wish. And this gets tagged with the, the, the measurement record, and it's just a part of the metadata. All right, so we're, we're ready to go here. Um, I'll go ahead and go up to the top left and, uh, and select ARM and that basically prepares the slice system for data acquisition. So right now it's clearing out the flash memory of the system and when that's finished it'll tell us that it's armed and it hasn't triggered yet. So at this point um, we could disconnect the slice system from the USB drive and we can go ahead and connect it to our test article and uh, connect our sensors up and we're ready to go. Um, at that point, it's waiting for a trigger, so you might have a switch connected to the down port on the base to initiate a start-stop uh, command to start the recording. Or uh, you could also have set up the system to trigger off of a level on a transducer. So uh, if some threshold in the transducer is, is exceeded and you predefine what that level is in Sliceware, uh, you can handle the, the triggering that way to initiate the 10-second recording. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use the software to do the, the data recording, the triggering. So if you go to the top of the screen here, there are uh, some controls. Uh, there's one called Start. I'm going to press that, and as soon as I press Start, it's going to just verify that this is what I want to do. And now it's starting to record. You can see recording in process. I'm going to go ahead and flex the beam, uh, and so we get some strain gauge flex, uh, flexing information here. And our 10 second test is done. So it's, it automatically downloads at that point. And what we're gonna see here is a, a very short time window. It only recorded uh, about half a second of data. Uh, that's because uh, if you go to the top here and go back to the previous tab, Acquire, um, it only downloaded a small region, this region of interest between uh, minus 0.5 and, and 0.5 seconds. So uh, we wanna actually download the entire data set so I'm going to go ahead and say download all of the data. It's going to overwrite that previous record and it's going to it's downloading the data. Now it's going to display our 10 seconds of data. Okay, so this is, uh, uh, I, I didn't actually start flexing the beam until about five seconds into the test, but this is our, our measurement results that are now downloaded um, in the PC from the, um, from the slice system. Uh, things you can do in this uh, review tab here, you can you can click and drag to zoom on a signal, and so you can look at the data in more detail. You can do that as many times as you like. Um, if you go to the right side here, you can see zoom is active, but there are other things we can do as well. There's a grab and pan. If you select that, then we can take the zoom signal and move it to a different portion of the signal while it's still zoomed in and look at those kinds of um, the information on, on other parts of the signal. And then one more thing that we can do is we can actually choose select a point and this initiates a cursor and you can see it puts a crosshair on, a, on the point of the, the signal where I actually uh, click, and click the uh, cursor button and you, there you can read the time value at that point and you can measure the amplitude of the signal. So you can move that just by clicking and dragging the mouse you can move it to anywhere on the signal and you get an updated time and amplitude value at that point. Okay, um, one last thing to show you here. There are some simple calculations you can do in Sliceware in this review screen. Uh, you access them by pressing calculate, this little calculator icon. Uh, and then there's a drop down menu here and you can pick uh, a, these various math functions. I'm going to choose FFT. Uh, you give it a name so, because it's going to become a new signal. I'm going to call it FFT of strain. And then you select the channel. Since we only have one channel uh, active, that's all that shows up on the list here. So I'm going to do the FFT on this strain channel. I'm going to select add. So now we're looking at the original 10 second time waveform. But if we want to increment to the, the FFT, you just go up to the top here and you select Next. And there's the FFT of that strain signal. Not pretty, but that's what it is, okay? Um, 
so that's that's it for the review screen. Uh, the next screen we'll go to, and this will be the last one for this um, demonstration. We'll go to data, and data. This is basically how we take measured signals that are now stored in DTS binary format, and how we might export these uh, data files into other formats. So the first thing you do is you you go here and you select a data file. I'm going to look for the the desk three test that we just did. Okay, so that's selected. Um, they have there's some buttons here. You can choose if you only want to export a certain portion of the signal, maybe a couple of seconds, uh, you know, between um, maybe at the beginning, the first two seconds, or you know, between time 2.5 seconds and three seconds, or whatever. You can select ranges here that, that and those are, are those will just be the only sections that will be exported. It makes a smaller data file if you only want to export just uh, relevant information. And then there's something called threshold ROI, and uh, it's just what it what it sounds like. You, it basically will just you set a level in that you only want to export data that's above that particular level. So say you only wanted to export stuff that's uh, above uh, 50 micro strain, you would you would do that, and then only signals that are above that, only numbers above that that get exported. Okay, I'm going to leave. I'm going to export the whole 10 second signal. These are the different export routines that we have. We have .csv, which is a comma delimited uh, text file. We have uh, diadem. We have the SOMAT format to get it into uh, the SOMAT infield product. And then we have a few other uh, kinds of data exports here. I'm going to go ahead and just do CSV. Uh, and now we're all set to go. Uh, here you can choose uh, to not filter the data or filter the data. Uh, I'm going to just leave it uh, as filtered. Uh, so I click save and it asks me for a, a file name. It, it defaulted to the desk, the desk 3 test unfiltered in .csv format. So I'll go ahead and select that and the file is exported. Okay, um, where did that file go? It went to, if I go back to my C drive and I go to a directory called DTS. Within that directory, you'll find uh, another directory called Sliceware. And then I'm going to the current version of Sliceware under data, under CSV, under unfiltered. There is our desk3 test unfiltered uh, .csv file. So I'm going to click on that and it will automatically open up Excel um, because I have it loaded on my computer. And here's the here's the data file we just measured. So at the top, there's uh, all the header information um, that was defined, and then below that, in line 20 or uh, row 23 here, you can see uh, the the time and the amplitude information just showing up in the first two columns here. So that's the full exported data file for the 10 seconds. All right, that's it for the demonstration of uh, Sliceware and the Slice uh, system. I hope you uh, enjoyed the demonstration and um, good luck.